I was wondering how you define success personally. Well, I, I can certainly define happiness because that's what that's what I am. I mean, I, I and, and if that if that. <laughs> I mean, I get to do what I like to do every single day of the year, and I get to do it with people I like. And I get to, the, I get to, I don't have to associate with anybody. Causes my stomach to churn. At, uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, the only thing in my job I don't like, and this only happens about every three or four years, occasionally I have to fire somebody, and I don't like. That's the only thing. Other than I, I tap dance to work, and I get down there, and I think I'm supposed to lie on my back and paint the ceiling, you know, or something like my. <laughs> so, I mean, it, that's the way I feel, and I. And, and it, 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 it doesn't diminish. It, it's, it's tremendous fun. So, uh, you know, if uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, success is uh, 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 getting what you want and happiness is wanting what you get, well, I don't know which one uh, applies in this case, but I, I do know that I, I wouldn't be doing anything else. I mean, it, uh, uh, I do advise you, you know, in, when you go out to work, go to, go to work for an organization that you admire people you admire because it'll, it'll, it'll turn you on and, and, and uh, uh, you ought to be happy where you are working and I always worry about people who say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for 10 years, I really don't like it very well and then I'll do 10 more years of this and rest. I mean, that's a little like saving up sex for your old age. I mean, <laughs> not, not, a, not a very good idea. <laughs> So get right in. So get, recommend that. Get right, get right into. Get right into what you enjoy, you know, and and uh, and you'll be successful at it. You really will. I mean, you won't be able to miss. And uh, um, you know, that's. Uh, uh, I don't regard what I do as the most important thing in the world at all. But it's right for me. I mean, I happen to be wired in a certain way that what I do works in this. If I had to do what. You know, Bill does. I mean, <laughs> it lasts about 10 minutes. And uh, uh, that's true of a lot of things. But I, luckily, I kind of stumbled into the thing that I, I, I do best. And, and that, you know, that, it's worked out well. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't do a lot of innovating in, in, in what I do. I mean, I. I my job, I really have just two functions in my job. One, one is to allocate capital, which I enjoy doing. And, uh, and the second one is to have a group of managers, uh, to keep a group of people, 15 or 20 managers, uh, enthused about what they do when they have no financial need to do it whatsoever. Three, at least three quarters of the managers we have um, are rich beyond any possible financial need. And, and therefore, my job is to figure out how to cause them to want to jump out of bed at 6 in the morning and, and, and work with all of the enthusiasm they did when they, when they were poor and starting. And, and if I do those two things, they do the innovation. Of it. Bill, innovate. If you tell me who your heroes are, I can tell you how you're going to turn out to quite an extent uh, by this point in life. And, and I, I, I have been extraordinarily lucky in that none of my heroes ever let me down. I mean, I, the ones I uh, came up with uh, throughout their lives, uh, I've never felt that I've been let down in any way with it. Number one was my dad, and, and uh, uh, had a huge impression on me. Uh, um, my wife, who is here, is, is one of my heroes. I mean, she is, uh, you know, in, in terms of, of uh, she's taught me a tremendous amount, and, and, and uh, never seen anybody any better with human beings than, than, than she is. And uh, uh, you can, you know, Yogi Bear again said you can you can observe a lot just by watching. And uh, <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I, I watched my dad, and I, I've watched her, and uh, I had a, a professor, Ben Graham, uh, back at Columbia, and had a huge impact on me. So. I have been lucky in that I've had terrific heroes and they, they haven't let me down. And, and uh, uh, that, that takes you a long, long way. I, I've gone through one or two periods where it, it were kind of tough in life, but not, any, I mean, every, everybody's had, had that, but, but having the right heroes will take you right through it.
think just getting in, jumping in the pool, basically. I mean, I, 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 I've always enjoyed what I've done, and, and, and a few things have worked out very well. And, and the nice thing about the investment business is that you don't need very many. But you'll, you'll see plenty of times when you get chances to do things that just shout at you. And the, the thing you have to do is, is when that happens, you have to take a big swing. I mean, there is, that is no time uh, to be reading a book on the theory of diversification. I mean, you know, I mean that is the time to put, you know, put very significant. When you find something that where you know the business, it's within your circle of competence, you understand it, the price is right, the people are right, then you, you, know, you, you, take, your, you take your thumb out of your mouth and you barrel in. <laughs>
you know, the, the, the initiative is here, the intelligence is here uh, throughout the class. But some of you are going to be bigger winners than others. And uh, it gets down to a bunch of qualities that, uh, interestingly enough, <clears throat> are, 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 are self-made. I mean, it's not how tall you are. It's not whether you can kick a football 60 yards. It's not whether you can run the 100-yard dash in 10 seconds. It's not whether you're the best-looking person in the room. It's a whole bunch of qualities that really come out of Ben Franklin or the Boy Scout code or so, whatever it may be. I mean, it's, it's, it's integrity, it's honesty, it's, it's generosity, it's, it's being willing to do more than your share. It's, it's, uh, it's just all those qualities that are self-selected. And then if you look on the other side of the ledger, because there's always a catch to these, you know, free gifts and genie jokes. So you also have to, and this is the fun part, you also have to sell short one of the, your classmates and pay 10% of what they do. So who do you think is going to do the worst in the class? This is way more fun. And, and think about it again. And again, it isn't, the, it isn't the person with the lowest grades or anything, anything of the sort. It's the person who just doesn't shape up in the character department. I mean, we look for three things when we hire people. We look for intelligence, we look for, in, for initiative or energy, and we look for integrity. And if they don't have the latter, the first two will kill you. Because if you're going to get somebody without integrity, you want them lazy and dumb. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, don't want them, you don't want them smart and energetic. So uh, it's that third quality. And, but everything about that quality is your choice. You know, you, you can't change the way you are wired much. But you can change a lot of what you do with that wiring. And it's the habits that you generate now on those qualities or those negative qualities. I mean, the person... The person who always, you know, claims credit for things they didn't do, that always cuts corners, that you can't count on. I mean, in the end, those, those are habit patterns. And the time to form the right habits is when you're, when you're your age. I mean, it, uh, uh, it doesn't do me much good to get golf lessons now. If I'd gotten golf lessons when I was your age, I might be a decent golfer. But, but it, someone once said the chains of habit are too are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. And I see that all the time. I see people with habit patterns that are self-destructive uh, when they're 50 or 60, and they, they, they really can't change them. They're imprisoned by that. But you're not imprisoned by anything. So when you write down the qualities of that person that you'd like to buy 10% of, look at that list and ask yourself, is there anything on that list I couldn't do? And the answer is, there, aren't, there, there won't be. And when you look at the person you sell short, and you look at those qualities that you don't like, if you see any of those in yourself, you know, egotism, or whatever it may be, selfishness, you can get rid of that. I mean, that is not ordained. And uh, if you follow that, and, you, and Ben Franklin did this, and my old boss Ben Graham did this at early ages in their young teens. They just, Ben Graham looked around and he said, who do I admire? You know? And he wanted to be admired himself, and he said, you know, why do I admire these other people? And he said, if I admire them for these reasons, maybe other people will admire me if I behave in a similar manner. And he, and he decided what kind of a person he wanted to be. And if you follow that, at the end, you'll be the person you want to buy 10% of. I mean, that's the goal in the end. And it's, it's something that's achievable by, by everybody in this room. So that's the end of the story. want, think for a minute, you know, if you're going to get married, uh, and you want a marriage that's going to last, not necessarily the happiest marriage, you know, or one that, that uh, Martha Stewart will talk about or anything, but you want a marriage that's going to last. What quality do you look for in a spouse? One quality. Do you look for brains? Do you look for humor? Do you look for character? Do you look for beauty? No. You look for low expectations. I mean, you know, that, is, that is the marriage that's going to last. You know. Both have low expectations. I mean, it, uh, uh, and I want my partners to be on the low side on expectations coming in because I want the marriage to last. It's a financial marriage when they join me at Berkshire. And I, I don't want them to think I'm going to do things that I'm, I'm not going to do. So that's, uh, that's our guiding principle. To, Advice is all free in your marital advice, everything else. <laughs> the 
and I'm wired, no credit to me, but I'm born that way, so that I'm better at asset allocation than other people to some degree. Just like other people are better at all kinds of other things. And I was with two teachers out at Sun Valley <clears throat> that are doing more for society than I am, and they don't, this market system does nothing for them. Market system does all kinds of things for me. Gates says if I'd been born 5,000 years ago, you know, I'd have been some animal's lunch, you know, because I can't run very fast, <laughs> can't climb trees. I mean, you know, what those, the, and I could, I could tell that animal was chasing me, you know, wait till we see how I can allocate assets, you know. But, <laughs> it wouldn't have made any difference. So here I am, you know. I'm born now, you know. I, the, just very, very lucky. And the odds when I was born in 1930, the odds were 50 to 1 against me being born in the United States. That's a terrible set of odds to face. And yet I was dropped down here, you know. And if I'd been dropped down in Peru or someplace or, or China, I mean, I wouldn't have had a chance. So society is what does it for you. And, and uh, it should go back, in my view, it should go back to society if you've been lucky enough to be dropped into a society where your particular wiring pays off big. You know, it, it, uh, that's just luck. And, and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being lucky. I don't feel guilty about it or anything else, but I also don't feel that, I feel I have a lot of fun doing what I do, but I feel the money should go back into society and it should go back as intelligently as it can. And the best way to do it intelligently is to have high grade and intelligent people administering it uh, at the time. sit in the shade of trees that were planted by others. So it's obligatory, I think, to plant a few trees ourselves if we've had good luck. Uh, uh, it's, it's been a great ride, but it's not over. <laughs> but you've owned, when did you actually buy Geico? The, the, when, did you, when did you invest in Geico the first time? Is well, Geico, I bought, I, I, I met Norma Davidson when I was, I was finishing up in Columbia, and, this, and then I started selling securities when I got out. And I went out to my Aunt Alice, my Aunt Alice would have bought anything from me. And so I, she bought 100 shares of government employees insurance. It was the first stock I ever sold. And uh, uh, then a lot of years passed, and Mr. Davidson was very kind to me in a variety of ways. But I went, you know, I went in different directions. And then in 1976, the company got in big trouble because they miscalculated their reserves, and they were going broke. And so I came back here, and I, I bought a third of the company in the market in a very short period of time. And then in 1995, by now our third had become a half because they'd repurchased their shares. And I went out to see Mr. Davidson, who was, was out in Bethesda. He was 96 or 97. And he had a bunch of stock in Geico with no cost basis because he'd held it forever. And I said, Davey, if I make an offer for this company for cash, you're going to pay a big tax. And of course, if you die with the stock, you don't have that tax and you get a stepped up basis. So I'm not going to make this offer unless it's all right with you. And, and he said to me, he said, Warren, he said, I've, been, I've hoped for this all my life. And so we bought the rest of the company. It was, he was a great man.